Hello everyone, I'm Ethan, the founder of Outcast Games, and in this episode of Bite Sized UE5, I'll be covering the new enhanced input inside of Unreal Engine 5. The enhanced input system brings with it a variety of new input related features that can really take the input handling of the engine to the next level. And on top of this, it has complete backwards compatibility with Unreal Engine 4 input setups. To enable enhanced input inside of your project, go to Edit, Plugins, Search, Enhance to pull up enhanced input, enable it, and restart the engine. Alright, I have restarted the engine, but there is one more step we need to take. Go to Edit, Project Settings. Go to input, scroll down and change default player input class to enhanced player input and default input component class to enhanced input component. And now the enhanced input plugin has been enabled inside of this project. An input action is anything a character being controlled by the player might do. Walking is one example, pressing a button is another and input actions inside the advanced input system can have up to three floating point number axes associated with them. So you could have, you could just make use of one with the button situation, and it could be a zero when you're not pressing the button and a one when you are pushing the button. But with walking, you can make use of two, one for forwards and one for backwards. And so, Classically, where you'd have to have a separate input axis for walking forwards and backwards or walking right and left, they can now be inside the same input action. Input mapping contexts are what link the input actions to actual input into the engine. Multiple input mapping contexts can be applied at the same time and they allow for a more easier way to set up a game where the same button might do different things depending on context. Uh, controllers are a great example because you have uh, you don't have an entire keyboard to work with. You're going to be using the square button on a PlayStation controller or the X button on an Xbox controller for, I think, a couple different things depending on the situation that the character is in and input mapping context just make this easier. And on top of that, you can give certain contexts priority so that if there's a situation where two contexts are enabled, let's say the same button is used to do something in the inventory and it's also used to open a door and the character is standing next to a door, it will prioritize doing things in the inventory instead of opening the door. Input modifiers modify the raw input data. Some examples of this are dead zones, multiple frame interpolation or smoothing of input data, converting local vectors to world space vectors, and more. On top of this, custom modifiers can also be created. Triggers used post modifier input values, and they determine when the input coming from a keyboard or a mouse or a gamepad is then sent to an input action or activates an input action and an example of using a trigger would be you have to hold a button down for a certain amount of seconds before the input action activates and so that's what triggers do all right, so let's just go through an example of setting up a super basic input using the new input, using the new enhanced input plugin. To begin, we need a pawn and a game mode. So let's add those. Of course, the pawn could, doesn't have to be a pawn. It could be a character. You could be doing this in a player controller as well. So let's add a game mode base. Let's just name it game mode or my game mode, I guess. Now let's add a pawn. We'll name it my pawn. 
now we can set the game mode override to my game mode and we can set the default pawn class to my pawn inside of our game mode now we can create our input action let's go to input input action and let's just name it my input action and now if we go to my pawn or even graph and type my input action we get the input action event for the my input action we can compile save don't really need to i'm just in the habit of compiling and saving all the time really <laughs> and now if we well we need a way to trigger that input action and that is where an input mapping context comes in so let's create this input mapping context called my input mapping context open it and we can add mappings like um, well, let's first select my input action and we can add mappings like the spacebar and if we wanted to we could add a trigger saying it has to be hold held down um, held down and released pressed tapped or we could add modifiers we could make the one value when it's down come out as the negative one instead we could swizzle the input access axis so that instead of default to the x-axis it's on the y-axis and for a tutorial on how to use those to create a full input action with WASD keys all four of them for movement inside of one input action go check out the documentation linked in the description below for now we're not going to worry about these we're just going to save this. We're going to go back to my pawn. We're going to go to, we're going to now get the controller. We're going to use that to cast to player controller. As the player controller, we'll just type enhanced and we'll get enhanced input local player subsystem. And we'll use that to add add mapping context we can select our my input mapping context this is where you'd give it a priority now let's string these together and now let's just add a print string and let's have it say subscribe to outcast dev school compile and now as we can see I press the spacebar and it prints out subscribe to outcast dev school hey everyone you might notice I'm in a different shirt right now and that's because these videos aren't made in one day. I'll usually record this part of the video, or the main segment, on one day, and then I'll record everything that I'm doing when I'm on the computer inside Unreal Engine on another day. And sometimes I forget pretty important parts of videos, like the outro. <laughs> and so here I am on the Unreal Engine recording day making the outro for this video. So if you found the content in the video to be helpful. If you enjoyed it, consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell. The documentation is linked in the description, so you can go down there and click that and check that out for more information on enhanced input. And if you really liked the video, come join the Discord server. It's linked in the description as well. There's 85 people there already, and it's starting to really come together. And I'm super excited to see where it goes next. So I'll see you all in the next episode of Bite-Sized UE5.